Sepp Blatter, former president of FIFA, quipped that football could be played on other worlds one day. In his address to the FIFA Congress in 2014, a day before the Brazil World Cup kicked off, Sepp Blatter said, We shall wonder if one day our game is played on another planet. Why not? Then we will have not only a World Cup, but we will also have interplanetary competitions. While it's fun to fantasize about playing our favorite sports on other worlds, is it feasible? Not at all. Almost every sporting event on the planet revolves around gravity, which is interesting to think about because we're playing with it. We might maybe be able to hold an intergalactic competition in which we compete against other humans living on worlds with a mass of about one Earth mass. But an interplanetary tournament is highly unlikely due to the gravity differences. We can rule out Mars because there isn't anything to breathe. Even though athletes frequently exercise at high altitudes where the air is thinner, there is still air. You'd be lucky to discover anything on Mars, and what you do find is almost undoubtedly unbreathable carbon dioxide. In addition, consider a competition between a Martian squad and a team from Earth. The Earth squad would be significantly stronger if the game were played on Mars because they are used to playing in higher gravity. If the game were played on Earth, the Martian squad would be crippled. To make this work, both teams must have players that live and play in a gravitational field that is highly comparable. Perhaps we need to look for a planet with about the same gravity as the Earth. Venus is 95% the size of Earth, with a diameter of 12,104 kilometers. That translates into a similar gravitational attraction. There's also an atmosphere, a choking mix of sulfur compounds, which is troubling. The surface of Venus reaches temperatures of 400 degrees Celsius, making it twice as hot as a cooking oven. And when it rains, it pours concentrated sulfuric acid. The rain stopped the game by melting the ball and players. Nasty, right? Just ask the Russians, who lost the Venera 7, 8, 9, and 10 in the 1970s due to these harsh conditions. Another issue is the atmosphere. Even on Earth, when sports teams travel across a country or the globe, the athletes may experience respiratory difficulties, mostly in regards to elevation. One team will likely be hampered by their inability to breathe the air of the opposing team efficiently. Because none of the other objects in our solar system now have a breathable atmosphere, we'd have to play in domes or special suits. Can you imagine players participating in a sport while wearing a suit protecting them from being exposed to a potentially dangerous environment? Speaking of the environment, let's look at some of our most famous instances in the solar system. The only planetary body humans have visited is the moon. It is also the only other planetary body where sports have been played on, as evidenced by Alan Shepard teeing off on the moon's surface during the Apollo 14 mission. Despite their best efforts, our athletes could not throw, kick, or hit a ball or object hard enough to launch it into lunar orbit. The escape velocity of the moon is approximately 8,641 kilometers an hour. The fastest recorded speed for a ball in sports is in High Alai, where the Pelota traveled at 302 kilometers an hour. This corresponds to around 3.5% of the moon's escape velocity. So, how about a planet with a greater gravitational pull than Earth? In our solar system, you have four choices. Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, or Neptune. These are the gas giant planets, which have diameters ranging from 5 to 11 times that of Earth. But that's not ideal, because the gravity of Jupiter, the greatest of these, would be roughly two and a half times that of Earth. Kicking a football is the equivalent of kicking a block of concrete. That injury would necessitate more than the magic sponge to heal. 
None of these planets have a solid surface on which to build a pitch, so you wouldn't even get the chance to position the ball on the pitch in the first place. They're merely gas spheres that get denser as you descend until the environment resembles an ultra-compressed metallic liquid, similar to metal mercury. Europa and Io, Jupiter's moons, aren't much better. Europa is covered in a changing ice crust that lies atop a vast ocean of water. It has the potential to split up at any time, similar to Earth's Arctic ice sheets. This isn't ideal. Io is the solar system's most volcanically active body. It is always on the verge of exploding. So, sorry World Cup fans, you'll have to watch the games on Earth for the time being. If you like this video, please consider subscribing and click the notification bell so you do not miss any upcoming videos.